Now we're focusing more on this bowl prop here. We want to use one of these pencil presets as a base for our new preset. And to create a new pencil, we can click on this little plus button here. With these preset saves, we can now use our newly created brush. So continuing from where we left off from last episode where we made our custom brush presets, today we can focus on making the prop itself. For today's example, I'm going to use a wooden chair as I feel like that's a good basic prop to start off with. So I'm going to simply just import the chair reference. Now for this reference, I'm going to show you a different way you can port it in because originally I left it as an original bitmap. Instead, you can choose to convert it to a Tomb Boom vector drawing. The benefit of doing this is you can have a less pixelated reference. So under this little um, option here, you can choose to open up the parameters. And here we're going to choose to import the color as a texture. What this will do, it will import a new scene palette to Toon Boom Harmony. So if I press OK, you can see this little option come up. And that's basically trying to import the color as a texture in the scene palette. So once I press yes, we can see now here, if I hide these two. So now we've got this nice chair example. Similar like last episode, I'm gonna I'm gonna move it into this little reference composite here. And we're just gonna move it around so it looks a bit better. I'll even give it a pick, why not? Right, with our chair imported into Toon Boom, if you look on the scene palettes to the right, you can see it's added a new scene palette. This is the image's texture. It's not actually a color, it's the texture of what the image is. If you try and open it up, you will notice you can't change the colors from this. So you wanna kind of just leave this alone. You don't wanna be touching this or deleting it, otherwise you might cause some problems. Under your own scene palette, it will be named your Toon Boom file. So this is called Bluey Prop 1, for example. If you do wanna rename this, you can just right click and click rename, or you can add other scene palettes with this cross up here. However, we don't need to do any of this, so I'm just going to leave it as is for now. What I am going to do, however, is add my own colors, as we don't really need these ones here. So, for the new colors, let's say we're going to choose chair palette one. So we're just going to add that as chair color one. And then what we will do as well is we'll add a new color, and we'll name this the chair outline. There we go. We've got the chair color, we've got the chair outline. The chair outline, I'm gonna to choose to be black as it's just a simple bold outline. Right, so with our palettes created, we can now move this slightly more out of the way and focus more onto the reference itself. If you do want to flip your reference, you can simply click on the peg here, go under drawing, transform, and then flip either horizontally or vertically. I'm gonna flip it horizontally so I can have it facing this way. With our prop reference finally ready and our color palettes made, we can now focus on drawing the actual chair. So for this, I'm going to add a new drawing using the hot key control R. I'll name this the chair base for now. We'll add it close. And what we'll do, we'll add, we'll also add a new composite to this because we want to keep all our drawings sort of separate from the references. So if I put a composite here, I'll simply hook these up and move them along this bit here. Let's, let's tidy this up a bit more. So if we just select all this, we can move them along. So with our color palettes added and our reference sorted out, we can now focus on drawing the outline of the chair. Now I'm gonna, st I'm gonna break this off into little sections. So let's start off with the chair seat or base for now. So under the drawing, once we have this selected, we can then choose our color of the chair outline, which is black. And I'm gonna use the shape tool to create a basic shape of what of what the chair seat looks like. So if I put this roughly here, you can choose to scale. If you hold down the Alt button, it will scale the circle from the center. And if you hold down Shift at the same time, it will create a perfect circle. Now, I don't want a perfect circle. We want to, we want to try and get it like this. So I'm just going to hold the Alt key and get it scaled somewhere along here. Now we can see that since the reference is on top, it's a bit harder to see the line weight. So what we can do is we can increase this transparency. So instead of it being 25, I could change it to 50. So we can see the line a bit better. In fact, I might even change it to 75 for now. With this done, I can now sort of scale this uh, ellipse here to fit the chair a bit more better. And now obviously the shape isn't perfect. And this is where you can use the contour editor tool. Here we can see all the pivots and where they are on this oval. So say if I delete this pivot here, it flattens out this curve. And what we can do with these pivots is we can move them to make the shape of this chair. 
So we're going to go for the outline for now. So if we get a rough idea of where each pivot should go. We've got a very crude outline of the chair seat now. To make this a bit more accurate, we can either add pivots, delete them, or change their rotation. So here, for example, what I might do is I'll move the pivot down here. And if I hold down the control button, a little plus will show on the cursor. When you click, it will then add a new pivot point. So I'm going to go ahead and just uh, sort of create this chair. If you hold down the Alt key when on a pivot, you can also choose to rotate it as well. What I might do is I might change the reference transparency back up to 50, back onto the drawing, and now we will focus more on these little pivot points here. Now, whilst working on your chair in the camera view, it might get a bit chaotic with all the layers you might be working with. To make this easier, you can either choose to show or hide layers, or you can open up your drawing view. Now, the drawing view will only show you what is on your current drawing you have selected. So if I select this drawing, it will show that. If I select this, it will show the reference, for example. So you can have this and like open in one side if you want to see like a rough idea of what your drawing will look like. You want to make sure you're working in your line art layer, not the color art. If we move this to the side, we can see this is roughly what the line art of the chair will look like. What you can do is you can go into the node view and flick this on and off to get a good idea to see if you've got the right shape. So I can see down here, it's a bit crooked and a bit off, so I might just fix that line up a bit. With the outline now finally made, we now want to add our color. We can just use the paint bucket tool here and just fill it in straight onto the line art, but this is still on the line art layer. Instead of doing this, what we can do is if I delete this, if you, when using the select tool, if you highlight this, you can go into the tool properties and press this button here. It will create like the line art in the color layer without the line art with an invisible stroke. So if I press this, if I go into the color art, you can't see the stroke because it's invisible. But if you press K, you will then see this sort of blue outline. This will also be visible on the camera view. And in the drawing view, it's also got this button up here. But if you have this closed, sometimes it's not on the camera view as well. I've, I think I've added it somehow. But if you are struggling to find it, you can just go into the tool properties and press this button here. With this stroke created, we can now fill in the stroke with the color here. So under the drawing view, we can see we've got the line art and we've got the color art. If you want to see both these layers at the same time, you can press this little eye up here and it will show you both of them. There's also an overlay and an underlay which you can use for other things, but I don't think they'll be necessary for today's episode. So if I close this drawing view, we can now see we've got this base of the chair. If you want to see it a bit more better, we can just hide this as well and we can get a good idea of what it looks like. There may be one line we're missing, which is this sort of like curved line here. We can simply add a line to this. If we go back onto the shape tool and choose the line option, hold this down, you can choose to snap to contour, the align guides, or just snap and align. Right, so I've added another line to the base of the chair to separate the top section and the side section. Now, you will notice when you make any amendments in your drawing view, anything that you've done in the line layer won't be applied to the color layer. So if you want to update this, what you can do is choose just to like delete this, select the line art and press this button again when it's highlighted. Now, what we might want to do for this chair color for the bottom bit, we might want it to be a darker color. So I'm going to copy this color here in the scene palette here. And what we'll name it is I'll name it a color shad here or shadow. And for this color, we'll make it a bit darker so what we can do is well, we can either choose the color here or you can choose one of the ranges here so we want a bit of a darker color so i'm going to select this here and we'll use that for this little side here so use a slightly darker color there and a slightly lighter color here now when we hide the reference what we'll be able to do is we'll be able to see our seat chair now which is looking pretty pretty simple i mean it is just like a slab of wood so we're not we're not expecting anything too amazing here that concludes it for episode 3. We are slowly starting to build the foundation of our chair prop by utilizing the shape and contour editing tools. In the next video, we will be able to vectorize the rest of the chair, so stay tuned for episode 4.